Okay, so that is actually we called as uh, declare expressions. Okay, like declare rules. So that I started. So declare rules are like that. You need to define it only once. Okay, you no need to call the uh, or reference the same functions again and again. So what it really does that like it will do the all like your calculations or actually rephrasing all that will be done by pega itself so that you need to just declare it and forget it actually like uh, whatever the things that you need to be done later it can be done by pega okay so in pega there are six category of the declare rules okay so normally like if you say uh, six type of declare rules okay declare expression okay declare constraint and declare on change declare trigger then declare index and finally uh, data page okay so data page we have seen actually like what are the uh, features which is there in the data pages okay and so we'll talk about one of uh, like all of them now so this on change and trigger okay this is a little advanced concept, so I'm not co I'm going to cover this one is here. This is actually part of the higher course, so this is actually not going to be covered. Okay, and I'm going to cover all other three: expression, constraint, index. So data pages we have already covered. Okay. So yeah, expressions, right? So expression. What do you mean by expression, right? So you want to calculate some values or you want to get some decisions based on some values or based on some of the properties, right? So you have to write, see, you know area. Area is equal to like length into the breadth, right? So you know the formula. Anytime you want that, like anytime you need it, you want to just like if you want to the area, you need to know length and breadth of that, right? And if you say you are buying the item, like the price is, um, thousand and you want to buy five quantity of it right so the total quantity of the line item should be five thousand so that should be automatically calculated okay and if you are buying ten items the sum should be calculated automatically of that so that is really your total amount should be calculated as well that one automatically so that type of things we can achieve from the declare expression rules so that's the expression you some of the expression if you want to calculate by system you can declare that is a declare expressions okay constraint constraint is actually like if you uh, like the name suggests right you want to put some um, validation across the property so that time we can define the declare constraint rule so we'll, when we we'll discuss about Constraint rule, we'll talk about more detail about the constraint rule after that. Okay. I'll just discuss about the on change and trigger rule. Okay, what is actually the benefit of that? So if you say uh, you are saving something, your work object in database, right? So many times actually like it should be related with the it should trigger something else as well. Okay. So the triggering of that is actually required some actions need to be taken after that. So when you are committing to the database, when you are saving the database, when you are uh, deleting something from the database, you need to trigger something, right? So that time we can go for declare trigger rules. So if you want to take some actions, you can invoke an activity to do that, okay? So that's the declare trigger rule will be used for that. And on change rule is uh, at least doesn't work with the database operation if you're changing the property right actually if you're in a clipboard initially you made the quantity 5 okay 
and later you change the quantity to to 10. So it need to be checked that if the in, it is there in the inventory or not, right? On changing the quantity itself, like you want to change like in your product and you, he cannot order more than 5, right? At the moment if you want to deliver only 5. So if you want to change that to more than 5 to 10, right? So you need to invoke an activity to change that some of the critical fields so that you can able to validate that one before itself. So that time declare on change rule can be invoked. Okay. Yeah. Index, um, I'll talk about this one actually later because uh, I'm not talked about the databases, right? So without database information, we're not about to learn about the index. So I'll tell you about this index uh, also later. So the today's main focus will be expressions. Okay, how we are going to calculate the declare expressions. Okay, yeah. So yeah. So expressions. Now there are two ways, right? So now it's like told, right? Area equal to length into breadth. So, if you don't know the length, can you calculate area? No, right? So, what you can need to do? You need to get the first equilibrium. You need to check if that value is there or not. If it is not there, you will ask, uh, like, try to get the values of that first to calculate this one, right? The mean value, target property. So that you have one target property, you have source property. So. If you have all the source property to calculate the target, okay, then it actually become forward chaining. Actually, there is like how you calculate the values in Vega. Uh, so declare expression works in two different chaining, okay, forward chaining, backward chaining, okay. So what is mean by forward chaining and backward chaining? So if you have your input, like your source, you are changing and you are going to calculate the target of that. So this is actually straightforward, like you are doing the forward chaining to calculate the values of your target property. Okay. So this is become forward chaining. And why it is called a chain? So if you say um, if I'm say A equal to B plus C, okay, B equal to some D plus E. E is equal to C plus D. Okay. Uh, something uh, and D equal to you say uh, B plus E. No, that cannot be done. That becomes circular. Uh, F. B minus E. Yeah. Okay. We uh, B minus. Anything exactly. But uh, Jacob, what did you say? I said B minus E. D will equal to B minus E. No, what will going to happen with that, right? Hmm. Actually, because both B and E is calculating that. Let's see. Oh, okay. Both B and has D. So what will happen? Actually, like it will be circular. Actually, A D will change again. B in change. Again, D will change again. Then D okay. will calculate again and again. You know, it's, we set everything each time. It's circle. Yeah, that will become circular. So that will create a problem actually because Pega will confuse with that, like how they are going to get the value later. <laughs> so this will uh, create deadlock because see, when actually I'm giving B minus E, okay. Mm. So what will going to happen? So for B, it depends on D plus C, right? Mm -hmm. It will calculate D from here, again it will calculate B from again and then again. Yeah, I got it. So the value will keep on changing for both of them. Okay, so here actually I'm just using two more variables, F plus uh, W, okay? So now if you see, actually I'm changing the value of D, okay? So all will be going to be in chaining way. So first you will calculate D, okay, from I change F, so it's change the D. From the D it's change the E. From E it's change the B. From B it's change the A once again. 
Mm. Okay, so that's the chaining will happen from that. So that's it like um, normally this is it like uh, because we don't just create for single expression you can create a so if you say you have list of items right mm -hmm. so you are calculating you have 10 list items okay amount amount one okay like that you have amount two amount three like that you have multiple things right mm -hmm. So if you change any one of them, your total amount will be changed. So if you see total amount, yeah, right? Yeah. You need to get the total amount from that. So if any one of them changes, you need to calculate the total amount once again. So this type of expression normally like it's actually if you are changing any one of this amount, the total amount will change automatically. Yes. Okay? So this is your forward chaining, okay? And if you have to calculate total amount, and that is dependent on all these three, okay? So that is the there is bigger one more type of chaining we call as backward chaining. Okay. Oh, okay. This is the, okay. So in this format, like. Now, uh, I'll tell you the, from the below example, I need the value of A, but I don't know if actually I have all the variables to calculate the value of A or not. So what actually I'll see uh, in the backward inning, what the formula for B plus C, if B or C is available or not. So I got not B is there or not. So for B, I'm going to calculate the B or B is D plus C. So I'll check if D or E is available or not. Okay, again. So, so that's actually like you can see uh, opposite direction, like top to bottom or bottom to top. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's actually like E plus C is forward chaining. Uh, sorry, sorry, but one minute. E plus B plus C is backward chaining. I mean. Right. I'll just use my earphone. It was. Uh, yeah, now it's now it will be better. Yeah, Jacob, sorry, actually I was not so using. I'm saying mm -hmm. amount one, amount two, amount three equal total is forward, forward chaining. Backward chaining is a plus b, a equal b plus c. Correct? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, correct, not. correct. That's correct. What are you saying? Correct, yeah. Forward chaining is basically we're going to go from one, two, three, and then we get the total amount. So we have the values and we just go to the end. We sum in it. I think backward chaining is when you go, you don't know on news until you start from the bottom, you come backwards. Yes, that's get B and C because B is B is later and then E is later as well, correct? That's right. So how we are going to do that? Actually, Sega has actually the methods is there. So when we are de uh, defining a declare expression rule, right? So there. I can't hear you. Sorry. I can't hear you. Uh, now not able to hear yet. No, it's better. It's better. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So let's see how we can going to calculate this one. Okay how we can go for create the declare expression rule. So we have created here. So this is the line item size, right? So uh, okay, for the, this one actually like for the time being, uh, I'm making that as a editable field, okay? So I can put the values here from my cell. Okay, I made it 
uh, editable as a now. So I can calculate the this I line item price. Okay. For this line item price, what I'm going to do is, so this will be the multiplication of these two, product price and product quantity. Okay. So what we can do is, we are going to create a declare expression rule for this one. Okay. So if you see it here, like uh, Beta has actually one more option to how you can go for creation of the. So if you go to the property, we have purchase. Uh, we are using uh, one minute. E data get purchase. So if you say I want to calculate the line item prices. Okay. So you can see if you like define expression. Okay. So click onto that. Okay. So here if you like if you say calculate. Line item price. So here, if you say it's going to use the page context of that uh, purchase. Okay. So this is actually very much important. If you like, when we are using this page context, if you like, uh, because the line item will be there in multiple places. So where you want to use that, the context provide that features. <coughs> So there actually you want to get that calculate of dot uh, product price multiply with product quantity. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh, I need to change the type of them. I say define them as text. Okay. Let's we change that one here. Okay. So we'll change that to Uh, it's not giving the option to change it again. It's okay. Yeah. Product price, I'm making a this uh, decimal. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So now it's become decimal. Okay, quantity I'm making as? Well, quantity too, that will be price, right? Ooh, yeah, okay. that's the price. Okay. And which is making it in visa. Okay. okay. Where is the line item? Line item is not saying here. Uh, why line item is missing here? If you see it here, maybe add. I can see line item within that. <laughs> this is strange. Prices are there, but uh, here I'm not able to see the line item prices because this should be defined within that class itself. <coughs> it should be part of that only. Why that uh, property is not okay? <coughs> but, uh, this property also should be decimal. Fine. Okay. Anyway, this is there, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So now we are able to. 
quantities t and z of t. And it's not saved yet. The mark is saved. Yeah, now it's saved. So now it's actually done, okay? And one more thing, I think like if you say you want to get the total as well, right? So let's say we want to going to, uh, we have the property, the total amount, right? Total amount, we want to define an expression, okay? So here you have an option of sum of, minimum of, maximum of, okay. So if you say you want to get the sum of that. Okay, so I want to use the percentage. Okay, so that's the line item calculation. Okay. The property are getting more to their condition with respect to each new. Here we can write the functions, okay, so let's, uh, in place of that, we can go for some math functions. So normally, uh, most of that uh, functions are actually like we are not using, so if you say math, oh no, I feel like there is still the has some uh, page list type of the properties, what are the properties? Some actually let's say let's say we'll check for some of the functions which is available in Tilda with the sum. Oh, only one is there. So is this thing are going to work? There's the count in page list. Index in page list is in page list. Length of page list. No. Just give me one minute. Sum of
that just you need to write in this place here. Uh, I'm not going to use this purchase. Okay, we are. I'm defining it here. So it's trying to get the purchase. One moment. Um, okay, scan is speak a little, a little louder. Uh, is it better now? No? Yeah, 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 now it's fine. I don't okay, you're fine. Now what actually we need to do is we need to define the purchase class here. Okay. So here we need to define the Same thing is happening. Invalid expression or difference error final x. Change tracking to calculate values. That's just make very, very input changes and we need to do that. One minute. Can be converted into the desired type. Okay, I'll come back to this one. how is working for the first one okay first one actually we have done so let's we do with new application launch manager okay Yeah. So now, oh, did not I see that section? Yeah, now I see it. No, it's not saved yet. I might it edit even. So uh, the
Why is it still showing in read only? Select total Q or G. That's the section. As something is not uh, correct today. It should be displayed, actually made it editable only every time. Still it's showing in read only. Oh. Oh. I'm going to do is actually one more field, but that will be I'm deleting this particular report time being here and I did it once more I'm just adding it here so my that will help me to get the right? why is it so okay oh this is the label only I'm not I think I'm not in product uh, price Okay. Let's see now what actually it's going to work with there. So now we say click, I'm writing uh, product price is 12, product quantity is 10. So you can see that line item price is auto, auto calculated with that. Right? So if we say we have 1000, we can give it 10. Okay? So it becomes 10,000. So that's actually like the uh, how the declare expression rule. So I was trying to get the sum of these three. So whatever the items will be at, there will be a total field at the bottom which will be displayed you the total sum of it. So we'll see that how we can going to do that. So that's it will be facing some issues in the uh, format of that. So this is working fine. Okay. So if you like when we are giving the product price, product quantity, it will auto calculate the values. Yeah, so now we are going to see this one. Okay. Uh, one minute, I'll just, I'll just want to refer anywhere if I can get something with reference to the same. I'm mis doing one mistake on the expression. So these are all actually you can see uh, existing rules for the declare expressions. I, I think it was the type because the type on the first page we just changed was coming conflict as a, as a text. That's probably the case. Now that you've changed it, if you redo it, it may work. Uh, one minute. I think the this one here, the purchase. Mm -hmm. If you save this again, it may work because the line item price was not working because one of the um, variables was 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 coming across as a. Okay. So let's. Yeah, because uh, it's depend on to the line item prices. Yes. Do 
do I need to define this variable in lower class? Might be that should be the need to be done. I'm trying to use the actually normally I'm using the implementation layer here let's uh, I think I need to do one change I need to define this into the implementation layer okay mainly like uh, because I'm going to use this discretization with the uh, from there I'm just discarded it okay and then this total amount I'm saving that into the uh, there also in the purchase work in the purchase class okay going to create the expressions within that one. Here it doesn't give any issue. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's the. I think the context was different there, so it was not working as expected. Okay. So let's see. Uh, we are going to uh, not here because this is the repeat grid, and then we have the user interface, and we have select product. Okay. Okay, so the purchase date, so okay, we can set this to, okay, uh, so here yeah, I'm going to use it, one layout, and there I'm just going to display the total amount. Okay. Yeah. okay. Directly I'm meeting as read only. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And we can go in. Now we can rephrase the same. Yeah, now you can see the total amount is coming. We can format that little bit. Let's see how it's working. Now you can see that amount total is calculated, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see. Uh, okay, yeah, it's coming right here. Yeah, so that actually say three. So that amount is actually calculating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, like your declaration. You can do the calculations on that. Okay. So now I'll show you one more. Uh, yeah. But the total amount part, I don't think I almost you exactly. But I did get the item in the in the something. So how do you add the, the total amount to the UI? Can we just go back to that a little while? Uh, the total part, yeah, it will take, uh, because I use one of the advanced concepts of it, okay, uh, so it will take some time, I will explain you now, okay, so what I did is, uh, here actually I was uh, total amount, okay, I have many line items, so if you change the line items also, it will calculate that values as well, okay, so if you see now, I have defined the total amount, here, right? So this is the expression I wrote. Okay. So what I can do is. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Uh huh. Now yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Keep your uh, headphone tight. Yeah. That's okay. very low. So now, if you select, I'm trying to run it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So actually, see because. Uh, the de declare rules what we are doing is right so it will show you now in this way see uh, it's showing you line purchase one line item zero product price so you can add multiple here so uh, let's say like if you want to change the view you can change the view of it so it is like in a view like structure now can add more product uh, in org structure if you can see that so now I feel like if you want to test it this is for testing purpose so this is actually we normally call as dependency network in Vega. So here, I click what I'm doing is, like you have multiple line items. I have option to copy that. Actually, no, it's not giving me the option to copy that. So normally, it's actually for one item only showing it here. So see, I select I give the ten, okay, and I use the quantity as four. Mukesh, can't hear you. Mukesh? Now it's fine. Yeah, yeah. now it is fine. And it was something oh. is happening outside. I think I mean, yeah, okay, fine, fine. Sorry. So this way, I think, yeah, you can test your, the no, one part of it. So uh, this is actually we normally call as dependency framework. So here you can see what are the labels you want, actually how the values is getting calculated. We are able to uh, calculate the declared expressions, how the value will be comes on that one. So this can be used as a run framework. Okay. So this is actually, like, uh, I'll actually the time comes, I'll explain you that as well. When actually I change the context of that, right? So now it's like I'll tell you about this, the calculate value, okay? You have, whenever input changes, like if your input is changing, you are going to calculate the target. So that becomes your, um, back forward chaining. And actually like if you, there is no value present, whenever the property is missing, whenever used, all this use the backward chaining. In this scenario, that use the actually to do the calculation as the backward chaining. Okay, and when input changes is only the forward chaining, all the other three are the backward chaining. Okay, and these two are actually uh, I recently added as a part of the collection rule. So that's actually again some of the uh, advanced concept. So we can skip that two part now. 
Okay. So this is actually whenever input changes, when we are doing it, it's a forward chaining calculation. When we are doing the other three, it will be backward chaining calculation. Okay. So context, uh, again, it's required time to understand this bit. So declare expression is simple, but some of the complexities are there with the context setting. Okay. So if you say regardless of any page, so whenever you have referred that property, it's going to calculate that. And if you want to refer, restrict that only to the applies to class, so then it will actually going to use this option. Okay, so that I did. Actually, currently what I was actually was happening is I was using in the uh, work class and I'm referring the property into the implementation class. So the implementation class property are, cannot be reused from the uh, your framework class. So I need to move that my uh, declare expression rule declare expression rule into the implementation layer as well. Earlier I was creating onto the work group label. So in the work group I cannot use this property because that's the below level of it. So I need to define in the same place of the page group or page list here itself. So that's why I moved into total amount. Okay, so that's actually uh, we want to cover as the declare expression rule. Okay, and we'll continue on uh, Monday day then now. Okay. Okay, so we'll uh, continue on Monday. So this is actually like the declare expression rule. We can write expressions in I think uh, the values are more actually removed. Actually this all also they have removed in the more actually advanced version they have removed more of them also. They are actually like saying that you can use the functions. So for this it's like whatever the thing you can define the more functions now. So we'll continue on uh, Monday. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.